I just copied a website that's making $19,000 per month from one single page, and I never created a website before. Like, how? So I used AI to copy this website in less than a day. And here you can see the website compressjpeg.com. It had almost 1.9 million visitors in one month, and a site like this has at least an RPM of $10. So for each 1,000 views, they will get paid $10. So they're making like $19,000 a month from only Google Ads, and that's insane. In this video, I'll show you exactly how I cloned CompressedJPEG.com, how I set it up with Google Ads to make money right away, and how I even connected Stripe for premium features, all using just one single AI tool, no coding required. Now, what most people don't realize is that the simplest websites are often the most profitable ones. This image compression tool generates five figures monthly with just one page. And I'm about to show you my exact process says step by step for replicating this business model. Step one, initial setup and upload interface. Our build starts off simple. The first goal is to set up a clean, minimal interface where users can upload their JPEG images for compression. So nothing too fancy yet, just something that works, that looks clean and is easy to interact with. So I'm going to prompt the AI with this. Create a simple web app with a clean UI that lets users upload JPEG images for compression. Start with drag and drop upload interface that supports multiple JPEG files and shows basic previews. The response comes back with a full HTML, CSS, JavaScript layout. It includes a drag and drop zone right there on the page, plus a fallback upload dialog just in case someone prefers to click and select files manually. Once files are added, they show up in a list with their names and file sizes. It's basic, but clear. There's also a bit of validation logic built in, so only JPEG files are accepted. This setup laid a solid foundation for building out more complex features a little bit later on. Now, while the functionality was basic at first, it clearly demonstrated how image uploads would work and also gave users immediate visual feedback. And with simple elements like file previews and progress indicators, the interface does feel interactive enough to guide the next stages of development. Step two, fixing upload preview and download issues. With our basic upload interface working, it's time to test how it actually performs in real life. And right away, as you can see, we have two major issues showing up. First, image previews aren't showing up at all. Second, even after compression, there's no way to download the images. Now, these are core features, so we need to have them fixed before moving forward. And all I have to do is prompt the AI with a quick summary of the issue, like I'm unable to see the previews and also unable to download images. And from there, the AI AI updates both the front end and the back end logic. So the first fix is for the previews image thumbnails now show up instantly after file selection thanks to the file reader API. It gives our users a clear view of what they uploaded, which immediately makes the interface feel more responsive. Next, the download problem. And the fix adds download buttons that appear after compression finishes. And the download links are now tied to the correct image blobs, and they also preserve the original file names, which does make things more organized. Everything is wrapped in a properly formatted link, so a single click lets the user download the image without needing to open a new tab or do extra steps. And with these updates in place, the app goes from feeling like a rough prototype to something that actually works. Our users can now preview what they're uploading and download the compressed images without any confusion at all. It's a huge step forward in making the tool really feel complete and reliable. Step three, expanding upload features. Now at this point, the uploader works. Great, but it does still feel a bit basic. It's fine for testing, but someone who actually might want to upload a bunch of images or something too large, uh, the cracks start to show. So I figure it's time to tighten things up and make it behave more like something you would actually want to use. So I'm gonna go ahead and give Replit this prompt. We already have an image upload system, but we need to have all these features, drag and drop interface for uploading images, file selection via browser dialog, multiple file upload support, and a size limit for uploads. We already have some of these features, just add the ones not already implemented. If possible, improve the features already implemented. And from there, the AI fills in the gaps all by itself. It adds proper support for the standard file picker, so users can click to browse files, not just drag them in. It also makes it easier to upload several images at once, which is way more realistic for how people actually 
use this kind of tool, at least for me. And to keep things from breaking, we've now also implemented a file size limit, 10 megabytes max per image. If someone tries to upload something too big or the wrong format, the app catches it and throws a quick visual warning. No silent failures and no guessing what went wrong. Now this update took the uploader beyond a basic demo and turned it into something much more reliable. Our users can now upload large batches of JPEG smoothly with helpful feedback if anything didn't go through. It also worked consistently across different browsers and handled slower networks without issues, making it feel ready for real world use. Step four, implementing image compression technology. All right, so far our users can upload and preview images, but none of that means much without compression actually working, right? So this is the core part of the app. It's the feature that saves space, loads pages faster, and makes the whole thing useful beyond just viewing files. So to get started, I'm going to send Replit this prompt. Next, we need to focus on the image compression technology. We need to have JPEG compression algorithm implementation, adjustable compression quality settings, and optimization for web usage. We already have some of these features, just add the ones not already implemented. If possible, improve the features already implemented. Now what comes back to me is a solid upgrade because Replit adds JPEG compression using either the HTML5 canvas or a lightweight library like Compressor.js, whichever method works best in browser. A new slider shows up that lets users choose how much compression they want, anywhere from 10% to 100%. It gives just the right amount of control without overwhelming people. And to make things easier for everyday use, a couple of preset buttons are added too, like web optimized and best quality. So one click and you're done. You don't even have to think about percentages if you don't really want to. Compression also happens instantly now. There's no need to re-upload files every time you change the settings. And to make things feel more complete, there's also a quick size comparison that shows our users how much space was actually saved. I know it's a small detail, but it is really satisfying. Step five, batch processing and queue management. So at this point, the app can compress multiple images at once, but when I throw a larger batch at it, it starts to freeze. So the first few images might go through, but then the process stalls completely. So it's clear that something behind the scenes is choking on the load. So I'm going to give and send this prompt over to Replit. Good job. Next, we need to focus on batch processing. The app already has the ability to compress multiple images simultaneously, but it should also have a proper queue management for large batches. After testing the first attempt, let's go ahead and follow it up with this. It is bugged and it is stuck on the first image uploaded. And from there, Replit pivots and introduces a proper queue system to handle the load. So instead of like trying to compress everything at one time, images are now processed one by one asynchronously. This prevents memory overload and also keeps the browser from crashing, especially useful for people working with big sets of images. There's also a progress indicator added that tracks where you are in the batch. So like three of 10 images compressed, it helps manage expectations and makes the app feel more responsive. And if an image fails to compress, the system doesn't just stop. It lets users retry the failed file without breaking the entire queue. And that kind of small fix goes a long way in making the whole experience feel smoother. Thanks to the new system, our users can now compress dozens of images in one session without the browser having to freeze up. It was a big step forward in performance and made the app much more scalable for real world use. The queue also came with status updates and visual progress bars so users could see exactly where they were in the progress at any point. Step six, preview functionality and visual assessment. Now that the batch processing is solid, the next thing that stands out is the need for better visual feedback. Compression is working well, but our users still need to see what they're gaining or losing. It's not enough to just say a file is smaller. People want to know how much quality was actually affected. So I'll prompt Replit with, we already have before after comparison of images and file size reduction statistics, but next we need to add a proper visual quality assessment. And now the AI responds back by layering in more advanced preview tools. First, it adds a draggable slider that lets users compare the original and compressed versions side by side, like a live before and after view. There are also toggle buttons to quickly flip between the two versions without having to drag, which is useful when you 
you just want a quick glance. In addition to that, the app now shows the compression ratio and the exact file size saved in both kilobytes and percentages. So you're now just left guessing how much smaller your image really is. And as a final touch, it introduces visual cues like star ratings next to each file, letting our users rate or quickly judge how well the compression performed. It's not just about numbers anymore. It's visual, it's interactive, and it's easier to evaluate. Step seven, user authentication plus landing page and UX enhancements. With all the core features working, it's finally time to focus on the first thing our users see, the landing page. Because up until now, the app works well, but the interface still feels a little bit too utilitarian. It needs structure, flow, and most importantly, a proper signup system. So I'm gonna prompt Replit with next, add user authentication. Make sure to also add a landing page with a simple, clean interface, intuitive user experience, minimal design, and clear instructions and feedback. Then I'm gonna follow it up with, I wanna be able to register and log in properly, no need for a demo user. The result starts to bring everything together. A proper hero section is added to the top with the app title, a short description, and a clear call to action that invites users to upload their images. The layout is centered and uncluttered with clean typography and a strong visual hierarchy so users know exactly where to go and what to do. Below that is a feature section that lays out what the app actually does, everything that makes it useful in plain language. There's also a fact section which helps cut down on confusion and answers common questions before users even have to ask. Now on the UX side, subtle animations and transitions are added as you can see, just enough to make the site feel smooth without slowing it down. And of course, the big one, user authentication. Users can now sign up or log in securely with their email and password with real-time checks for common issues like weak passwords or duplicate emails. Sessions are handled through cookies or local storage, and there's a simple profile dashboard with a log out option, of course. Now this setup lets users return to the app with their settings intact and access premium features tied to their account. It also sets the stage for future upgrades like usage tracking, history, and cloud-based storage. Story eight, Google AdSense monetization. All right, so the core features are built and our user accounts are now in place. The next step is to make the app financially sustainable, especially for free tier users. And that's where monetization comes in. So I'm gonna prompt Replit with, next we need to connect to Google AdSense and have Google Ads. And from there, ad placements are added carefully. We make sure not to overwhelm the interface by keeping ads in the sidebar and the footer away from the main workspace. The ads by Google script is embedded along with the required client and slot IDs and the app is validated with Google to meet their terms of service. Also, the ads are styled to match the minimalist layout and they only appear after compression is complete because this way they don't interrupt the flow or distract users while they're actively using the tool. And with the setup, the app now has a passive revenue stream from free tier traffic without sacrificing usability or user trust. Step nine, Stripe for premium unlimited compression. Now, to wrap everything up, it's time to give power users a proper upgrade path. Now, the goal here is to introduce paid subscriptions for unlimited compression, something useful for professionals or heavy users who need more than just what the free plan offers. So I'm gonna prompt Replit with next, add Stripe subscriptions for premium features, unlimited compression. Now, admittedly, setting this up does take a little bit longer, especially with Stripe's webhooks and checkout flow. But after some quick troubleshooting, it all will click into place. The app now supports one-click checkout with pricing tiers defined on the Stripe dashboard. And once payment goes through, users get confirmation emails and receipts, and the webhook kicks in to activate the subscription automatically. There are also some nice interface touches. Users on the premium plan see a premium user badge and their upload limits are lifted right away. Now, after sorting out early issues with webhook failures and checkout session timeouts, everything starts running smoothly. And now the app officially supports a stable revenue model. Our users can pay for unlimited use and the system is flexible enough to handle future upgrades like usage-based billing or promo codes whenever needed. It's a clean finish and a solid foundation for growth. All right, so what started as a lightweight image uploader has evolved into a complete production-ready tool. It handles everything from 
intuitive uploads and smart compression to user accounts and monetization, all built entirely through step-by-step -step AI prompting. The final version includes drag and drop uploads with JPEG validation, adjustable compression with quality presets, batch processing with proper queue handling, visual before and after previews, and easy downloads. It also supports user login, Google AdSense for free tier monetization, and yes, Stripe powered subscriptions for premium access. Now, if you're working on your own AI assisted project or you're just curious about what is possible, please do make sure to follow along. There's a lot more like this coming along the way. Thank you for watching.